video the other day about switch bots being used to open garage doors and how to get it to work. Um, the video had a huge number of views and was very popular, uh, but it detailed a really complicated procedure of basically putting in a wall switch that was a separate wall switch that was um, tied to the garage door opener uh, because the switch bot obviously couldn't press the garage door button and get it to open. So they basically put in a whole new switch just so the switch bot could open it, which is way, way too complicated, way expensive, way too much effort. Um, I actually solved this exact same problem two, three years ago. I have a switch bot on my garage door opener and it works just fine. It's been running great for two or three years, gone through a couple batteries. And my solution is much, much easier, cheaper, and faster to implement. But first, let's do a quick demo. This is the switch bot. This is a regular LiftMaster uh, garage door opener. It's wired to my garage door. Um, it's probably one of the most common brands of, of um, garage door openers. And here's the switch bot app on my phone. We're going to go ahead and hit it and demonstrate that it works. Well, and I think you get the picture. So, disregard all the stuff on in the shop here, we've got a lot of projects in progress. So let me explain why this works and why it's better than going and rewiring your whole garage just for a $25 widget. So the problem with the switch bots out of the box um, which makes them kind of a challenge to use for garage door openers, is they've got a limited amount of, uh, of force they can exert and a limited amount of travel. And that's kind of a problem because with these, you know, LiftMaster style garage door openers, they actually have a fair amount of travel to push the button and it requires a fair amount of force to push the button. Um, and the reason for that is the switch bot has a little electric motor in there and it's got this little arm is all it's got to work with as far as leverage and travel. And so what I did is I made a different arm, uh, on what I call a 90 degree arm. It goes in the switch bot just like the original one, but when the switch bot is at rest, like this one is, let me get a little close here, that arm hangs out at a 90 degree angle. And this is at the default setting. I know you've got, there's a setting where you can have it partially deployed uh, in advance, uh, this is with it at the default setting. So anyway, uh, my solution to the mechanical problem of the switch bot not having enough guts to push the button was to give it more leverage. Um, as you can see, I've mounted it on a pretty straightforward bracket, so it's pretty much centered over the over the button. And um, then with that combined with uh, the 90 degree arm here that I 3D printed, it has no problem at all pushing the button. And so let me show you how to install one of these. Okay, so to do this job, you're gonna need a couple tools. You'll need a small flat blade screwdriver. You'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver. And of course, the 90 degree arm that we showed you earlier. And of course, your switch bot. So first take your flat blade or even a fingernail and there's a little uh, a tab on this side and you can use that to cover, lift the cover off. I took the liberty of removing the battery but normally there's a battery right here. So you would take the battery out. Next, you remove this plastic piece. This black plastic interior is all one piece. And it's, it's uh, kind of held in with plastic clips here, here, and then here. So you want to start with this guy down here and gently pry him up a little bit. And then get this guy to pop. And then there you go. So he comes out just like that. Next, you've got the board. And the board is kind of a misnomer, or not a misnomer here. It's kind of deceptive. There's a screw here which you can remove, but there is also an adhesive pad holding it in place. Now, in this video, as I've disassembled this one before, um, that pad is not super sticky anymore. But if you're disassembling a brand new one, it's gonna be really tough. So first, unplug the, uh, the set of wires you're using the flat blade, gently uh, pry that off using the two tabs on either side and or fingernails, whatever 
gets the job done without breaking anything. There we go. So we got that guy unplugged. And then you're going to lift this guy off. And again, for this one, the adhesive pad has lost some of its juice, so I can pretty much, well, maybe I can lift it with my finger. Maybe I do still need to pry it. But yeah, you'll probably need to use that flat blade screwdriver and gently pry it loose because it sticks on there pretty good. So that's the whole chip in the board. You put that aside. There's two more screws on the adhesive pad here. You gotta take them out too. Same thing with. Okay, and with the uh, screws out, you can just lift this guy out completely. Now you have access to the motor. The motor is actually held in by that plate that was screwed down. So to get it out, you kind of just, uh, you can pry off on the arm a little bit, but you kind of just turn it over and give it a couple good smacks and it'll, it'll come loose because there's nothing actually holding the motor in directly. It's kind of a small, fragile machine. Okay, it doesn't come completely out, which is fine because that's not what we're trying to do, but it comes out enough for you to remove the arm. So you take that arm off, you set it aside, and you put your new arm in. And there's a flat on that shaft that you have to match to the flat that's on the 90 degree arm. And it should go in pretty much like this. Oops. Make sure you don't go too far uh, onto the shaft there because otherwise it won't fit back in. That's pretty much where you want it to be. Okay, so now with your new 90 degree arm in there, we can go ahead and reassemble. So you slide that right back in the way it came out. As you see, you got your 90 degree arm sticking out now. And you take your, uh, this, the uh, other board that is not actually a circuit board and put that down uh, with the sticky side up. And then you can go ahead and put those top two screws in, but don't put the bottom one in because that kind of helps um, secure the actual board there. Okay, now that you've got the mounting board in, you can go ahead and get the circuit board in. Go ahead and put that on top there and gently push it down and then secure it with that last screw. Don't over tighten any of these screws by the way. They're they're not exactly uh, structural. Just enough to snug things out a little bit. Okay, now that we've got these guys in, don't forget your plug here because that needs to be done before you put the plastic piece in. So go ahead and line them up and plug him back in. Helps if you don't have fat fingers like I do. All right, now go ahead and get your plastic in. This guy can be a little bit finicky. You gotta scoop it around the, the battery spring there and kind of depress the wires a little bit. But it will go in with a little bit of finagling and you'll hear it snap a few times. And that's pretty much it. You drop your battery in. Again, I don't have a battery handy here. And then put, your, uh, put the lid on. And when you put the lid on, the two prongs here, they go towards the front. And that's all there is to it. Now you got a switch bot with a 90 degree arm that has more travel and more leverage to hit garage door openers. Oh, by the way, if you're looking to get one of these, um, they're available on my website, uh, on Etsy. And um, if you have a 3D printer, I also have the model available for a small fee. Anyway, hopefully this uh, gives you an easier way to get switch bots to open your garage door openers. Thanks for watching.